Um, my name is Meg Spriggs. I'm a researcher at Imperial College London. Um, as you can tell from my accent, I'm not from here. I uh, grew up in New Zealand. Uh, I did my PhD at the University of Auckland in New Zealand. Um, and while I was doing my PhD um, in psychology, I was watching the research developing here at Imperial College led by um, uh, Robin Carhart Harris and David Nutt. Um, and um, I'm someone who's always been passionate about mental health and mental health research. It's why I went into psychology, um, uh, particularly um, eating disorders. Um, uh, I think that they are still widely misunderstood, um, underfunded, um, and uh, there's not a lot of treatment options uh, at the moment for people with, with eating disorders, particularly anorexia. Um, and, um, you know, I was watching the depression studies, the psilocybin for depression studies that were taking place here at Imperial College um, and listening to the reports of, of uh, people coming through these studies and, and the, the changes in their lives that, that came out of that. Um, and so I reached out to David Nutt and, and Robin and said, you know, have you thought about, have you thought about um, psilocybin for anorexia? Um, and, um, you know, uh, ended up being that Robin was having a similar thought at a similar time and, and we, we kind of connected on that. And um, I was very lucky to have the opportunity to come over here and work with them. Um, and so now I'm uh, one of the leads on our trial of psilocybin assisted psychotherapy for anorexia that's just about to start here at Imperial College London. So it's an exciting time. Um, uh, but I guess my sort of you know, I feel that in this area, we, we're we kind of battling two, two sides of the stigma. We're battling stigma on the mental health front. As I've already mentioned, eating disorders are vastly misunderstood. Um, they are, you know, the funding, vastly underfunded. Um, anorexia uh, currently has no um, approved pharmacological treatments. Um, it has the highest mortality rate of any psychiatric condition, both due to the physical complications associated with low body weight, but also um, high suicide rates. And we're all aware of it at the moment. It's, um, you know, there've been recent um, events in the media that have drawn attention to eating disorders. Um, uh, and with this COVID uh, crisis pandemic, um, the rates of eating disorders have absolutely skyrocketed. Um, Organisations like BEAT, who do incredible work here in the UK, um, uh, have their phone lines have gone, uh, you know, uh, crazy um, with people who need help, people falling um, back into um, relapsing, but also uh, developing new eating disorders. Um, and so now, more than ever, we need to be exploring new treatment options. Um, we need to find new treatment options for this group. And, um, you know, so we have, we have that side of the sort of the, the battle and the stigma, but then there's also the psychedelics. And, um, uh, you know, I think psychedelics are, again, vastly misunderstood because people go, they're a drug, they're illegal, they must be bad. Um, which is the kind of this reverse um, reasoning, which doesn't make sense, you know, saying they're illegal, therefore they must be bad. Maybe they shouldn't, you know, maybe we should think about the, our, our legal approach to them first. Um, you know, currently they're schedule one and um, that makes research incredibly difficult. I moved here in 2018 and we are starting the trial now. Partly that's because of what we have to go through to get, uh, uh, you know, get one of these trials off the ground. They're incredibly difficult um, because you have to go through so much red tape. Um, and so that's why I think that we should be looking to reschedule uh, psilocybin to schedule two. Um, firstly, just so that we can make the research easier so that we can do these trials. This, you know, the UK is supposed to be world leading in research and it is. And we've got these wonderful minds like David and Robin who started these trials here years ago. Um, and we can be pushing forward on this front. 
um, but it would be a lot easier if um, you know if, if these if this the scheduling could change so that we could do this research without years of paperwork and 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 thousands and thousands of pounds um, of you know funding there is a lot of misconception um, around um, you know what what a psychedelic um, a trial is like what the psychedelic experience is like this idea that people lose control completely um, that's not the case um, you know we do this in a very controlled environment um, and um, uh, and we are you know careful with our screening that only those who um, we think it would be appropriate receive psilocybin um, and it's not addictive um, you know, there's there's uh, there's no addictive profile to psilocybin, um, so it's not that people, you know, it, it, that's not that's not a worry for us. That's not a risk. So, you know, the, we've we've had these um, amazing trials in depression and 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 centers psychedelic research centers are popping up all over the world now, and um, there's lots of lots of research going into particularly depression and um, and PTSD, um, but you know um, up until now no one's looked at eating disorders um no one's looked at anorexia there's a trial going on at johns hopkins now as well that's also looking at, at anorexia and a couple of others um across the world um but you know we need to know we need to know whether this works uh, we need to we need to explore this as an option um and at the moment this is so hard it's so hard to do um so um you know Anorexia is 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 thought of as a very difficult condition to to recover from and to to deal with. There are, you know, you you do have the 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 mental aspects of it, but there's also the physical side and and the recovery journey from an eating disorder from anorexia is long. Um, uh, weight recovery is is slow and it's hard. It's really hard. Um, and especially when we live in an environment where we're constantly surrounded by messages of, of weight loss, of new diets, of what our body should look like. Um, it's okay to tell someone, hey, you look great, you've lost weight. But to say to someone, hey, you look great, you've gained weight, no one ever says that. Um, but actually, sometimes that's what's needed and that's that's healthy. Um, and it's so it's you know recovery is coming up against culture it's coming up against what we're surrounded by and when we've got a government that's changing the rules so that there's going to be calorie counts on everything that we eat our diets become a math problem they don't become about health and that is terrifying for someone who's in recovery um you know beat recently did some research where they asked people who um, were in recovery or had recovered from an eating disorder, what um, calorie counting would do for them in terms of going out um, or calorie counts on menus rather. Um, and they found that over 90% of people who had had an eating disorder or were in recovery said that it would have a negative impact on their recovery process. Um, and, you know, that that's, that's terrifying. Um, and as well, uh, you know, it, anorexia is, is um, it's sort of characterized by quite rigid thinking patterns. Um, and uh, this is where I see something like psilocybin could possibly be really, really effective in that psilocybin assisted therapy has this capacity to open people's minds up to new ways of thinking and new perspectives on the world around them and themselves. Um, and um, that could really be something that could help someone to engage in the recovery process in a new way. Um, and that's why I think that this research needs to happen and it needs to be done. And, and no, we don't know if it's going to work yet, but that's science. That's why we need to do it. We need to try it. Um, and we need to live in it or, or we need, uh, we need, yeah, we need the research to happen. I think our, our education around drugs needs to change um uh and that is that is happening um uh but it's you know when we talk about um psychedelics in and psilocybin in the treatment of mental health we're not talking about giving people a bottle of of 
drugs that they take away and they take every day and they, um, you know, they take home with them. We give people psilocybin in, in a controlled environment. They're in the clinic with us the whole day. It's psilocybin assisted therapy. Um, so they spend their, their experience with us. Um, and it's all about being in the right set and setting. Um, and we put huge emphasis on that in our trials. You know, we have um, the environments are made to feel comfortable and, and the guides spend a lot of time working with the, with the um, participants to get to know them. Um, so it's a very different type of treatment than a lot of the other uh, drugs that are used in, um, in mental health care at the moment. It's, it's not about taking a tablet every day. It's about having this therapeutic experience that can then have long lasting effects way after the time that the drug is in the body. Um, so from that angle, they're a lot safer than a lot of the things that are out there at the moment. Um, they are also, um, they're, yeah, they're non-addictive. Um, so um, um, antidepressants, they, they work for some people um, and, and they can get people to a, a position where um, they are managing their, their symptoms well enough that they can deal with, um, with whatever's coming up in therapy. Um, but antidepressants don't work for everyone and we need to explore other options for those people that antidepressants don't work for. Um, and in the case of anorexia, there is no equivalent of an antidepressant for anorexia symptoms. So we don't even have that to begin with. Um, and that's why we really need to be exploring different ways to, to treat anorexia. You know, treatment at the moment is um, we're doing the best we can. And, and again, for some people that works, but, um, you know, mandatory, um, you know, it, it, feeding and, and um, uh, refeeding and, and um, hospital stays and, and all of that can also be quite challenging and traumatic in and of itself. Um, and so, and oftentimes at the moment, you know, mental health services are so pushed that when someone is at a, a stable body weight, then they're released from treatment. Um, and it can actually take a long time after someone's reached a stable body weight for the cognitions to start changing. Um, and so that's a real risk zone um, when someone leaves, leaves treatment um, and maybe their cognitions, are, they're still you know, stuck in some eating disorder mindsets. Um, that's why it can have such high relapse rates um, because people don't, uh, haven't sort of learned how to, how to, to, to manage those. Um, and again, that's, that's somewhere where, you know, psilocybin, maybe that can be effective in helping people to develop new ways of thinking. Um, you know, people use the, the analogy of shaking up the snow globe with psychedelics. Um, I, I can't claim it as my own. Um, but, um, you know, the idea that, that we get in these very, very fixed um, track, uh, thinking tracks, um, and what psychedelics do is they shake that up, they shake up the snow globe and it, it, it's like it gives you a fresh powder um, and it, to develop new ways of thinking. And that could be really, really pivotal in, in the recovery process for someone with anorexia. Um, and yeah, so the reason, you know, I think that, that psilocybin needs to be rescheduled is so that we can collect the data, so that we can do the science, so that we have the data to back us up to change perspectives on the way that we that we deal with mental health, but also the way that we talk about and deal with drugs. Um, but really, I'm a scientist, so I, I, I want the data, we need to have the data to back up what we're saying. Um, and that's going to be a whole lot easier if psilocybin could be rescheduled.